Right friends, welcome back to news analysis and features for 26th week. This is from 22nd to 28th June and what are the events for the week? E-payments, another salvo to control black money. The second one is housing for all by 2022. Can we achieve it? What are the constraints? Third point is Greece crisis. What do you understand by it? Fourth one is can normalcy return to Afghanistan because frequently Afghanistan is into the news. The last one is a Sentinel 2A satellite to track health of crops. Right? Let us look at the first one, e-payments, another salvo to control black money. E-payments, another salvo to control black money. Let us look at the events, the government took Three important decisions which were announced in 2015-16 budget. Before going into e-payments, let us look at these three aspects which were declared in the budget for 2015-16. First one is black money undisclosed foreign income and assets and imposition of tax act 2015. This was announced in budget and subsequently it was placed in parliament and it became act now. It is black money, undisclosed foreign income and assets and imposition of tax act 2015 and the implementation date is to be announced. But because of this act, severe penalties will be imposed on the persons who ever hold undisclosed assets abroad. If anyone is holding undisclosed assets abroad, 30% tax will be imposed. That means 30% of the value of undisclosed asset will be imposed as a tax. Second thing is three times penalty. That means 90% of the value of the property will be penalty. Third one is rigorous imprisonment up to 10 years. So, these conditions are stipulated as per this act and the date is yet to be announced. Before announcing the date, now government came up with some compliance window. Whoever wants to come clean, if somebody is having foreign asset, by using this window up to September 30, they can come clean and if they voluntarily disclose the foreign assets, 30% tax will be imposed and only 30% penalty will be imposed. And this voluntary disclosure scheme is applicable up to 30 September 2015 as far as undisclosed foreign assets are concerned. And the implementation of this act is to be announced. Second important point announced in the budget is Binami Transactions Prohibition Amendment Bill 2015. This was recently placed in Lok Sabha, act to be passed. And once this becomes act, then subsequently severe punishment will be imposed on the persons who hold Binami property. What is Binami property? If X is paying black money to purchase a building of 1 crore rupees, if X is paying black money to purchase a building worth 1 crore rupees, but that will be registered in the name of Y. Y may or may not know it. That is Binami transaction. So, this is second one. Third one is any sale or purchase exceeding value of rupees 1 lakh requires a quoting PAN number and this is also to control black money and this is also yet to be implemented by the government. So, these three things were announced in the budget. In addition to these three things, to control black money, government wants to increase the share of uh, e-transactions and government wants to reduce cash transactions. That's why government wants to give incentives for uh, e-transactions like transactions by using debit card, by using credit cards, by using smart cards, by using prepaid cards, by using digital wallets by using POS terminals. These are all considered as e-payments and give incentives. If people are resorting to digital payments, give incentives like tax breaks, give some tax concessions. 
if he is a merchant give some tax concessions to him that means encourage digital payments reduce cash transactions that is the main purpose of uh, this e payments and whoever is resorting to electronic payments then incentives will be given and whoever is doing cash transactions he will be disincentivized that is the main purpose of this draft guidelines are put into the public domain and what are the advantages first and the foremost advantage is black money circulation can be reduced because whatever spending is there that will come into the organized financial system second important point is uh, transparent accounting will be there evasion of taxes will be reduced third thing is automatically audit trail will be there that means whatever payment or whatever transaction we make it can be traced even after several years also right what government needs to done let us look at this what is required to be done first and the foremost thing is government announced tax concessions if merchants resort to more than 50% through e payments but the interesting point here is this may benefit e commerce companies second important aspect is there are transaction charges at several levels first and the foremost thing is car distributing bank will collect charges second thing is payment network like visa mastercard they collect payments and the bank which established pos terminal will collect payment so these are all the charges collected directly or indirectly by various channels and these should go away or the charges should be reduced other important point is interchange fee across atms should be reduced one more important aspect is this kyc just like aadhar should be made unique for each and every customer they need not look into kyc as and when they invest they should not resort to frequent kyc and it should be unique kyc and with all these things i think government can ensure e payments mechanism and this is the step in the right direction and these things should be kept in view to implement it in the right perspective right friends look into the second issue housing for all by 2022 can we achieve it prime minister of the country recently launched the program for urban areas 2 crore houses are going to be constructed by 2022 government announced these houses will be for ews or lig category you may ask a question what is ews ews is economically weaker sections these sections are the families which earn up to rupees 3 lakh per annum then lig category that is the low income group they earn income up to 6 lakhs per annum so for these two categories of people in the urban areas government wants to construct 2 crore houses by 2022 government wants to give subsidy of at least 1 lakh rupees for each house and interest subvention of 6.5% that means that interest subsidy will be borne by central government whoever is taking loan up to 15 years duration 6.5% interest subsidy will be borne by central government and let us look at what are the constraints the biggest constraint is scarcity of land land is the biggest scarcity in urban areas we have got bad experience of jawaharlal nehru national urban renewal mission at several places or in several cities these houses were constructed far away from the city far away from the downtown of the city and several houses are still unoccupied the second important point is ews category is up to the persons whoever are earning up to rupees 3 lakh per annum and most of the housing requirement in urban areas is ews category most of the requirement of housing in urban areas is in ews category and the biggest question here is can they afford third important point is proper civic infrastructure is to be created in these areas like schools hospitals 
look at another point number of approvals to construct a house nowadays several approvals are to be taken they have to be minimized corruption in civic bodies is known to everyone then a separate independent regulator is required because several real estate companies are delaying and charging several charges right several hidden charges are being imposed by real estate companies independent regulator is required then one more important point is funds requirement will be huge whether government able to look into the issue is million dollar question then one more thing is by 2022 several people migrate to urban areas and government says 2 crore houses are sufficient to ensure housing for all but this is not realistic because during the next 7 years crores of people will migrate from rural areas to urban areas then the actual requirement will be still more right friends look into the next one greece crisis uh, what do you understand by it everyone is talking about the greece crisis let us look at the history of greece right greece has got population of around 1 crore and mediterranean sea on one side and it is in south europe and greece as usual just like several western countries faced a serious financial crisis during the 2008 and subsequently due to the higher debts greece in 2008 announced that it was difficult to pay debts in the year 2008 greece announced that it was difficult to pay debts they approached this multilateral institutions international monetary fund european central bank and european commission to bail them out greece approached this imf ECB as well as EC to bail them out. Subsequently, they gave a loan of two sixty-four billion dollars. These are three popularly known as the Trika. The Trika is International Monetary Fund, European Central Bank, as well as European Commission. These three lent two sixty-four billion dollars and at the same time imposed harsh measures on Greece. They lent money two sixty-four billion dollars, but harsh measures were imposed on greece because of the harsh measures what happened subsidies reduced government expenditure reduced taxes increased during the past 4 years economy of greece shrunk by 25% because economy shrunk several people are out of jobs almost 25% people are without jobs unemployment in youth raised to more than 50% these austerity measures were imposed by multilateral financial institutions people are suffering badly because of it in the elections during 2015 january they elected anti austerity party sirija party headed by alexis tsipras they elected anti austerity left wing sirija party and Alexis Tsipras became the prime minister and subsequently discussions were going on between the Troika and the Greece between the Troika and the Greece government discussions were going on for the past few months after the new government came to power new government came to power on the platform of anti austerity measures discussions were unsuccessful for the past few months and exactly in a nutshell what the trika want is reduce subsidies increase taxes but what the greece government says is it is not possible to increase taxes as well as it is not possible to reduce subsidies because already economy is crippled many people are out of jobs if these measures are implemented then greece will further go into turmoil with that intention they have not agreed to the terms and conditions of this trika trika please don't forget ecb ec and imf is called a trika and this is a bailout package bailout package means they have to give more loans to bail greece out that bailout package failed and please look into this total debt is 323 billion euro out of which 60% they have to pay to eurozone 10% to imf and because of the failure of this bailout package 
what happened as on july 1st government of greece defaulted on paying 1.73 billion dollars to international monetary fund and government failed to pay back that is called sovereign default this is one of the largest defaults by a developed country and subsequently several restrictions are imposed on banks that they are called capital controls you cannot with draw more than this amount some banks were closed under these circumstances now greece is going for referendum greece is asking people whether you accept the conditions proposed by this trika or you do not accept the conditions proposed by trika that means yes or no if greece says no then ultimately it may result in Greece exiting eurozone that is popularly called grexit Greece exiting eurozone is popularly known as grexit let us wait till july 5th to know what the people of greece say right look into the next one can normal sea return to afghanistan afghanistan is in turmoil and i would like to tell you briefly about this in the year 1978 people's democratic party of afghanistan People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan or PDPA took power in a military coup that was popularly known as the Sar Revolution. This Communist Party executed several people. The government led by this Communist Party executed several people. At the time, there was unrest among the people, and at the time, they asked the help of Soviet Union. You may ask, what is Soviet Union? In those days. one block capitalist block was headed by united states of america capitalist block was headed by united states of america and communist block was headed by soviet union subsequently in the 90s soviet union disintegrated into several nations and russia is now the main country of soviet union in the year 1979 soviet union entered afghanistan at the behest of afghanistan government right subsequently soviet union towards the side of afghan government and at the same time mujahideen allegedly supported by united states of america as well as pakistan on the other side one side is soviet union second side is mujahideen allegedly supported by united states of america and pakistan fought for 10 years ultimately in the year 1989 Soviet Union left Afghanistan subsequently the country has gone into the hands of Taliban the country has gone into the hands of Taliban Taliban established its government in 1990s and it sheltered al qaeda Taliban sheltered al qaeda al qaeda was responsible for hijacking aircrafts into world trade center in united states of america subsequently United States of America and NATO forces NATO is a military group headed by United States of America United States of America as well as the NATO forces entered Afghanistan in the year 2001 in the name of operation enduring freedom because al qaeda was responsible for the demolition of world trade center in 2001 and to decimate al qaeda to remove taliban government and to create viable democratic state nato forces entered afghanistan in the year 2001 subsequently they were there in afghanistan for 13 years and the maximum forces last year they left afghanistan and at present less than 10000 forces are still in afghanistan but the problem here is after 13 years of nato forces in afghanistan taliban is still active it is attacking parliament it is attacking presidential palace it is attacking embassies it is attacking territories in kunduz province and the afghanistan army is not able to control taliban and that's why several incidences are taking place the nato during its 13 years of its existence concentrated on military solution but they have not gone into the aspect of socio economic reality in the country and 
unless some steps are taken future is a blank for afghanistan what exactly needs to be done is improving infrastructure concentrating reconstruction of afghanistan focusing on nation building and security challenges and international community should actively participate not only building of afghanistan but also finding diplomatic solution to the problem under these circumstances taliban is attacking at several places and international community needs to look into this issue to find viable solution to afghanistan problem right last one is the sentinel 2a to track health of crops you may ask what is the sentinel 2a it is a part of copernicus project this is a satellite this is part of a copernicus project it involves six satellites this a copernicus project involves six satellites this program is piloted by european space agency european space agency is a intergovernmental body of 22 countries headquartered in paris in france and this copernicus project is basically to look into the aspects of climate change as well as response to disasters and it has got six satellites two have already been placed and four are at to be launched if you want to look at the six satellites of this sentinel series sentinel 1a it was launched last year april 2014 it monitors earth's surface in all weather conditions sentinel 2a which was launched in june 2015 it studies the changes on the land surface including the health of plants very important aspect including the health of plants third one is sentinel 3a which is yet to be launched it will observe ocean properties and behavior sentinel 4a is for atmospheric gases sentinel 5a is for monitoring air quality on earth sentinel 6a is for sea surface heights monitoring sea surface heights from time to time this sentinel 2a was launched last month this was manufactured by airbus defense and space 40 companies consortium headed by airbus defense and space airbus is based in europe whereas the boeing is based in united states of america please don't forget this airbus defense and space 40 company consortium led by airbus defense and space manufactured these uh, satellites and these satellites the main purpose is it has got 13 spectral bands and some of which can reflect the light from plants and light from chlorophyll will be reflected light from chlorophyll will be reflected so because of which it can find out the health of the crops it can find out health of the crops and it he warn the world about the future harvest as well as impending famine if any this is the purpose of this sentinel 2a and this sentinel series of european space agency basically to track climate change crops quality of crops condition of crops i can say second one is air quality air pollution climate change changes on the ocean surface changes on the land surface so these six satellites of sentinel series are basically to track the atmospheric conditions and with this let us wind up news analysis and features program have a nice day please do join for question and answer sessions from this week onwards question and answer sessions are in two parts one is question and answers to general and the other one is question and answers banking please do join for all these lectures have a nice day thank you